great to see you, Tracy, Terry, and <laughs> I was like, have I got confused again with the time thingy? Yeah, yeah. our insanity around changing to time. I was going to send a message to talk channel on Slack to see if we should leave. Hello. Hey, Dan. Hey oh, still joining. Hello. Just for getting quorum, start sharing my screen. be up now. Zoom for some reason has started slowing down and freezing a little bit whenever I screen share. People can see it? Yep, we can see it. Awesome. All right, I see a bunch of people signed in and we got some new agenda topics. Awesome. Everyone else feel free to add topics while we wait. Where's CDCon updates? Um, you're Tracy or Jackie? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. What's about CDCon? You want to start with CDCon? Yeah, number one on that. All righty, let me just pull up. So I've been sending out a weekly email with all of our updates. So let me get that pulled up really quick. One sec. I was unprepared. I didn't realize you were going to call on me first. <laughs> um, okay, so, all right. So right now, um, I think uh, one of the things that leaked uh, a little bit early that is happening is GitOps Summit. Um, so that website is up already since it leaked out yesterday. We had, um, I think it was a, a Twitter handle, something about GitOps um, that somehow found out about it and, and leaked the news out for us. Um, so that event is being collocated on, on the 22nd um, along with uh, Spinnaker Summit. Right now we have 939 registrations and our goal is 3000. Um, for the organizations, the community organizations that we're trying to fundraise for, our goal is 10,000 and right now we're at $565. Uh, so I'm hoping that will also pick up. Um, however, sponsorship sales are continuing to be very strong. Right now we have out for signature or already signed 220, um, uh, $220,000 out of our 200,000 goal. And we expect that to um, continue growing as well, because like we mentioned, um, Spinnaker Summit and GAP Summit just launched. And we also have some uh, sponsorship opportunities around there as well. So diamond and platinum are sold out. I've got two gold and one silver left. Um, and then a bunch of add-ons for, for Spinnaker Summit and GAP Summit. Um, 
the CFP closed. Um, if for those who have not seen the early bird submissions, we've got seven that we accepted early. And in the next few weeks, the program committee is working to select that final um, agenda. Um, the agenda is going to be announced on April 2nd. So that's really my update there with, uh, with CDCon. Do we have any questions? Yeah, one minor update. Um, we also plan to organize a Jenkins Contributor Summit uh, during the time frame of the event. It's yet to be confirmed, but we are at the target Monday or, or Friday or Saturday so that it doesn't collide with uh, other agenda items. Yeah, that was that was the other update too. Thanks. Thanks for that, yeah. Oleg. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, I'll wait for Oleg to stop typing and then I'll click accept. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, otherwise, election updates. Um, so nominations are open right now, and I can never remember the dates, no matter how many times Tracy tells them to me. Uh, so do you want to remind me now, Tracy? Yeah, referencing blog post, um, I think we have nominations closing tomorrow. Um, and then pr provided we, we're satisfied, we, we've got some good nominations, then we'll go ahead with voting, which will be for run for two weeks. And the voting will be done from March 17 to March 30th. Um, anyone is eligible to run for these seats. Um, the idea is that they represent the end user organization point of view. And accordingly, they'll be voted on by the CDF end user organizations. So uh, reps from companies like um, Netflix, Fidelity, Capital One, um, HSBC and others. And yeah, if anybody has any questions about running for those, um, let me know. But yeah, looking forward to yeah, having those reps join, join this committee. Cool. Uh, one question, uh, uh, the, will talk still include uh, project representatives? Because uh, currently, talk members are linked uh, to projects, for example, Jenkins, Jenkins X. Um, will it remain the same, or will it be somebody from, let's say, another project or another company going forward? Yeah, we're actually um, revisiting uh, the, the talk makeup, and there's a, a proposal uh, that Dan helped formulate. Um, to, to the governing board, but basically um, the three classes of folks on, on the talk. So one is project representatives, one is uh, nominated positions, and then one is end user representatives. Uh, so the board is kind of looking at uh, how, how to evolve that, especially with anticipation of more projects coming on board. So hopefully we'll be able to share more on that soon. Any other questions Dan, there? Yeah, Dan, is there anything else you want to mention at this stage? Um, no, I guess it just yeah, rephrase that um, or restate it back. Yeah, so the, a big portion of the talk will still be representing projects that just won't be you know direct nominations from each project. Um, we're already at the cap right now, so we have to figure out what to do for the next project anyway. Um, there are six projects, and the charter says there are six seats, four projects. So what happens to project seven? Um, so yeah, the basic plan is to have still project representatives, but they'll be elected from across all of the projects in some manner that the details are getting worked out for. So each project isn't guaranteed one rep they get to pick because um, we're already at that cap. So it means that if you want to have representatives for each project, we need to increase the number of CDF member companies. So that uh, the entire talk grows as well, according to the charter. So, yeah, that, that would be one option. We could grow the size of the talk. That's not coupled to CDF member companies, though. Um, yeah, we could just grow it forever, one new seat per project. Um, but so we're keeping the size, I think the current proposal keeps the size at nine. Um, it's either nine or seven, I can't remember. It keeps the size at nine and sets aside a certain number for projects. And then 
people interested from projects will be able to be nominated and run um, and then fill those seats. And people can vote from across the projects too. Yeah, and I think we're looking to have folks vote um, if they are involved with the, the special interest groups as well, so CDF contributors as well. Um, yeah, more details are still getting worked out with the governing board. Um, well, we're on governance and elections and stuff. Maybe we should jump to your next item anyway, Oleg, um, on Jenkins governance updates, and then we can come back to this stuff. Maybe we still have JSOC updates before that. Um, all right, I was skipping too many. All right, sorry. Uh, yeah, GSOC updates. Mentors are getting added now. Right, so Kara um, got uh, the Cloud Beast, uh, or not the Cloud Beast, the Jenkins, sorry. Sorry, like the Jenkins uh, contributors added. Um, we put out the call for other project reps to also get their uh, their volunteers into the system. Um, I think Tracy uh, got, you know, like Tracy Reagan and other folks in there. Um, if anybody uh, is confused by this uh, or as a mentor wants to make sure that they get added into the system, um, please hit me up on Slack with your emails uh, and we'll get you added. Um, if I understand correctly, uh, the number of participants that we have in the system is one of the indicators into how many slots we may get because uh, it shows how many projects that we can sustain. So the faster we can get those in there, the better. Um, and I'll put out another poke on the, um, the Slack channel as well. Um, and then on a related note, uh, Oleg brought up the very excellent question, which is, do we also want to do season of docs? Um, I know that Jenkins uh, group does it. Uh, I could have sworn that Ortelius folks had mumbled something about this. Um, and so I wasn't sure who all is here today, but wanted to, uh, we've got Jith and some other folks. Uh, if if uh, projects are interested in also participating in season of docs, um, we can, I would happy, be happy to help organize that. I believe we've got another week and a half or so uh, before the deadline to get the organization registered. Um, and of course, obviously, Tracy uh, and Dan, if that's something that y'all are uh, cool with, I'm happy to look into that a little bit more. The deadline is March 25th. And the one thing uh, to keep in mind is that uh, if it's uh, application on the CDF level, it's not only projects uh, which can participate, but also, for example, CDF6, if they uh, want uh, to focus on specific documentation or on the white papers, etc. Uh, all of that can be in the scope of Google Season of Docs. It's much more relaxed than uh, a GSOC, for example. Yeah, no, I really like that, especially if uh, some of our SIGs can, can get involved. I think that opens up lots of possibilities. So uh, for us, uh, it would be nice to know where the CDF applies because uh, the deadline is quite close. And yeah, I mean, we definitely don't want to decide on the 24th, right? So mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what do we need, Oleg, for this initial stage? Uh, for the initial stage, you need two org admins, uh, application, organization profile. So pretty much like in uh, Google Seasonal, uh, uh, Google Summer of Code. Um, they changed the prop, uh, process for JSOT a bit this year. So uh, they don't have a site. Instead of that, uh, everything is driven by Google Forms and emails. But in principle, the application is the same. So if someone is interested, I can provide an interview later, uh, maybe not at the talk meeting. But... <coughs> um, Ortelius will definitely be interested in this. Um, maybe a good, Oleg, maybe you and I could put together a little email pitch, um, trying to think what alias we would blast it to as well. Okay. Yeah, I think the talk mailing list is, is a good one. Okay. I'm just wondering if... I'm just wondering, I mean, this this seems like a, also a good one to include the ambassadors in, for example, for any folks that they might know. That's true. Yeah, you can send it to them. Yeah, I can I do that. I, okay. Do you have that? Do you have that info, Oleg? Uh, yeah, you can uh, send uh, an invitation. I sent an invitation to Jenkins organization, so I can just uh, repurpose it uh, for the CDF mailing. Oh, list. perfect. Okay. 
And you have the, the ambassador and talk. Yeah, yeah we'll uh, do it tonight. That's fabulous. All right, so you and I can offline it. And if it looks like we've got, well, we've already got two. So maybe it's just worth doing it. Let's see if we can get more. Yeah. I'll say let's let's go for it and expect um, folks can can join in. Okay. Event Sig has some licensing questions. Um, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I will <laughs> pretend to be one for the purposes of this meeting. Uh, <laughs> so, what came up, uh, Andre? Do you want to take it, or do you want me to take it? No, go ahead, Steve. That's fine. Um, so the, just the question was, um, what is the preferred license for not only uh, like documentation and types of, um, I wouldn't say for lack of a better specs or standards um, that we should be using for the event SIG. And then um, also we uh, are foreseeing some coding as well coming out of the event SIG. So we just wanna make sure that um, we are using a correct license. I thought it was Apache 2 is one of the preferred ones by uh, the Linux Foundation, but just want to get some input. So I don't know that there is a preferred one. Um, I think the rule last I looked in the charter is any OSI approved license is okay. Um, in the CDF, most projects have gone with Apache 2. Um, anything... I, I haven't been able to find anything in the charter, um, the CDF charter restricting it any further. Um, Tracy, have you had a search? Uh, yeah, no, but it is any any OSI approved license works in uh, Apache 2, unless folks have specific other reasons to, to reference others. Yeah, so we don't have any policy in the CDF. Um, projects could have their own policy further restricting it if they wanted to, but you don't have that otherwise you wouldn't be asking. Um, and so the LF policy, the umbrella one, it's just any OSI approved open source license. Um, if you don't wanna read and learn about all of them, all the rest of the projects have seemed to have chosen Apache 2. Um, and then Creative Commons, one of the Creative Commons families for docs. Um, I think specifications and data are a different category too to complicate things further. So if the event SIG is gonna produce formal specifications or standards, um, we should probably chat with LF Council about what to do with those. Um, I don't know the answer, but we could get you somebody to help. Yeah, um, that's what I think we'll need to- Text Markdown is not a formal specification, so you don't have to worry. Right, so that's where we would need to, um, cause that's the, where they foresee is some specs and some standards to come out um, and they want to make sure that uh, that's covered correctly. Um, and if we have to do a split license, um, we could probably do that where the spec would be under one and everything else under like Apache 2. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, it, it can get complicated pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'll just reiterate, there's a big difference between the words specification and standard um, that I think a lot of us gloss over. So if you don't, know like which standards again i shouldn't be pretending to be a lawyer but i think my rule of thumb <laughs> is if, if if you don't if you don't plan on actually submitting this to a formal standards body like iso or something like that use the lowercase s specification okay <laughs> uh if you do plan on that then let's get one of council involved and figure out the right license and plan for all of that stuff andre do you think we're going to go the formal um route to submit it to like an iso Um, I, we didn't consider that uh, yet. Uh, <clears throat> I guess we need to to see what what others have done in this space. If, 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 to be honest, I I don't know uh, what the advantages and disadvantages would be. If we right, neither do I. Okay, we'll take that back to the event sig about um, the capital S versus the lowercase s spec. <laughs> I mean, I can briefly say the the capital S is is a long involved process, usually involving many years. It um, versus kind of what we we call kind of de, de facto specifications, which tend to be more code oriented. Um, oh, the 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 Barney the Barney um, specification. Everybody plays nice together. Yes. Um, so yeah, but. 
either way for whichever direction you you want to head uh yeah we can we can get some support and some further information okay and then i think this is further on uh or maybe i just missed it but um uh, cla um should we be dealing with that for the event sig or is cla um going to be covered somewhere else for uh, like at the cd foundation level yeah, I, I think what we might need to think about is if there is a specific code element, um, we might want to put it under a banner of a, like a specific project or a specific output and not necessarily tied directly to the event SIG in the same way where, where we have a repo at the moment, which is just, you know, meeting information and general things. So uh, it might be when it's, Kind of the artifacts start to become significant uh we consider kind of naming them and putting them in a distinct repo and then uh working out what the best way to to you know not just manage licenses and clas but governance around it as well okay and then and i mentioned this yesterday to tracy um i did find that the artwork repo does not have a license associated with it Gail, is, um, I think that's something we can follow up to make sure. I don't know if it needs a Creative Commons or Apache 2, but uh, so it does have the trademark reference to the Linux Foundation, but nothing about um, the licensing. Yeah. Gail, can we take uh, an action to follow up on that? Sure thing. Thanks. That's all I had. Awesome. Yeah, yeah just, I mean, this is. Um, Still early days. I mean, eventually, I imagine, I envision that we could do something like Cloud Events has done, where they have a name, so kind of trademark, and a domain name associated with it, and a yep. website and everything. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, all that stuff that's part of the CNCF is lowercase s specifications. Um, the only one that is more on the standard side that you might know of, um, just to give some other examples, is like the OCI stuff. That's why that's a whole separate entity from the CNCF. Right. Have, that don't even actually have formal standards yet, but they're set up so that they could propose those OCI things as standards if they need to. OK. Cool, thanks. All right. Hopefully I don't get disbarred for anything I just said. <laughs> we won't keep you to it. Well, well, you know, I, the, the, the Southern District New York is going to be after you in no time. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're busy enough. We, we got you on recording, Dan. Oh, man. Fake news. Oh, sorry. <laughs> too soon, is, too soon. My name is Saul Goodman. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, Jenkins governance, back to Oleg. Yes, just a quick update for your information. Uh, we have recently had changes in the Jenkins governance uh, roles. Um, uh, Mark Jackson um, uh, has stepped down uh, due to personal reasons, and he was holding two elected roles. One is Jenkins governance board member, another is Jenkins events officer. So for the Jenkins governance board member, we applied to the interim process. Uh, Evelina Wilpers uh, will be uh, the new governance board member until December 2022. So Evelina is active contributor, conference speaker, and uh, she was uh, one of uh, um, uh, contributors to the Jenkins configuration as code. And, uh, yeah, uh, we will be announcing um, uh, the changes uh, later this week, uh, but yeah, heads up for the talk. For the Jenkins event officer, uh, the situation is a bit more tricky. So we were able to find uh, a permanent uh, event officer for now. Um, I will be an acting event officer um, until we find another candidate. So if you need uh, any assistance with uh, events, for example, having Jenkins represented at the booth or participating in uh, outreach programs, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me and uh, I will be working on onboarding uh, contributors and uh, finally we'll have a shadow events officer so that we can onboard uh, uh, somebody within uh, several months. Cool. Uh, 
cool. Thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. While we're here, in for budgets. I just want uh, to ask whether there have been uh, final decisions about budgeting uh, for projects. I'm specifically asking about uh, Microsoft Asia sponsorship uh, for the Jenkins uh, project. So whether there are confirmed numbers for this year. So we do have in for budget, um, but that's separate from sponsorships that are direct from companies to projects. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay, so yeah, infra budget. Cool. Um, yeah, if there were any sponsorship stuff, that's up to projects to work out themselves. Um, but yeah, we do you have the details on the budgets handy, Tracy? Still muted. Sorry. Thanks. Um, yeah, so the board approved the budget for the year, um, and I think it pretty much on the infra side uh, is, is the same as we had for last year, which um, should allow for, for Jenkins to kind of continue at the same rate. Although if we have more projects incoming and more requests, I think we'll have to figure that out. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So I think yeah, you could to, to keep going in, in, in the same vein, but uh, yeah, if, if there's any growing needs, then we'll need to look at that. And I think there's still a desire to try and, and bring some of the, the cloud costs down or switch to to kind of sponsored options. But yeah, yeah. just- uh, We are working on that. Um, so we reduced uh, the total cost uh, by something like 3K per month over uh, the past half a year. And uh, also um, we are in talks with other vendors about sponsorships. So we don't cool. forget about uh, reducing the costs, uh, but yeah, I wanted uh, to know whether there is a specific target for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me get back to you on that. There's a few background things we haven't been able to prioritize uh, yet. And I know like CNCF is doing some interesting thing around sponsored cloud credits. Uh, so I've been tracking that program um, to see if it's something we can replicate uh, in CDF. But yeah, I just, just haven't progressed it yet uh, with everything going on. That, on, on a related note, it reminds me of a, something that came up around GSOC, which was what is the expectation as far as who is providing uh, you know, the funding essentially for projects? Um, at the moment, it seems a little bit unclear and I think we're trying to default to the projects need to figure it out. Um, but is that the official party line that we should be communicating? Yeah, unfortunately, we haven't sort of found something that works smoothly. And we, we had this last year, I don't know if it was with Outreachy or GSOC where I, I think Dan Lawrence actually helped out um, with, with some of the students uh, needs, but we don't have a, yeah, a formalized way to, to get that set up. Um, ideally, we, we would have something longer term, but we're just not there yet. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything imminent for the Jenkins? I know last year there was some stuff with like Kosuke's credit card. Um, I think you should be set up on the CDF billing stuff for now, right? Like you're not getting yeah. bills you've got to reimburse for. Well, we still have uh, some people uh, connected uh, to personal credit cards, for example, for domain, etc. We haven't uh, transferred all the assets uh, to CDF from our side yet. Uh, but uh, since we uh, resolved the trademark question, we can probably proceed with this uh, yeah. as well. But, yeah, let's yeah. follow up uh, on those things because we can get those resolved now. Yeah. Right. Anyway, yeah, the costs um, are very low com being compared to um, Microsoft Asia uh, and uh, a few other bits. So it's not uh, the biggest concern at the moment. All right. Yeah. If anybody has stuff on their personal credit card, so reach out soon, and we <laughs> and we'll get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any other topics for today? All right. I've been both an accountant and a lawyer in these last thirty <laughs> minutes, so I've been busy. Now I just have to do my own taxes. Dude. Come on now. Oh, I had one quick 
uh, other thing. I just wanted to congratulate the events SIG folks. Uh, um, we just got the announcement out today uh, about that group. And yeah, it was a, a another great kind of team effort with uh, lots of common um, quotes and testimonials from members. I'm just gonna stick that in here, but yeah, I thought just take another moment to to celebrate this this really great effort and yeah, just being at the meeting on Monday, a lot of energy there, a lot of PRs and discussions flying around. So yeah, congratulations to everybody who's been involved with that. Very exciting stuff. Awesome. And yeah, maybe one question about um, events seek. Um, is there any communication between the events seek and the AFIL project at the moment? Which project? AFIL. So yes, um, that was that uh, topic is being discussed. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we ran out of time last week to get into the details, but that is um, on the discussion list, and you'll see it in the um, the PR discussions where that's come up multiple times. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not forgetting about it. Okay. Thank you. I believe either it's next week or a couple of weeks out or next meeting or the meeting after we're going to um, do a there's gonna be a presentation around that so keep an eye out on the agenda yeah great yeah from our side um, we have one project idea about uh, integrating uh, jenkins with cloud events so once we have uh, more details we will present it um, at the seek yeah, we're always looking for uh, mm -hmm. presenters for mm -hmm. like a little demo. Oh, and one other shout out. Um, yeah, if folks can make it to the interoperability SIG meeting this Thursday, um, I think that Dina Portman is going to come along from Google uh, and talk about the amazing work she's doing with the Four Keys project for um, kind of using systems data to track Dora metrics and all the kind of integrations they've done. And I think that that specific conversation will be, um, you know, focused on the interoperability side of, uh, is this something that we can help uh, use to push for interoperability? And what integrations can we do? I think Tecton already works with it, but they'd be interested in other projects uh, taking a look and, and providing integrations or, or working with them to, to submit pull requests. So yeah, a pretty uh, hot topic that I think we're discussing in lots of different parts of CDF, certainly at the end user council as well. Uh, so if folks can come along to that one, it should be a, a really good discussion. Fatih, anything else I left out for? No, that was perfect for me too. Yeah, the only thing is like time zone, 4 p.m. UTC. <laughs> Just to remind. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank all. you.